I know for a lot of people, voting might, may not feel connected to what they're seeing in the streets, but it is. In our local elections, in our state elections, we're electing attorney generals, we're electing sheriffs, we're electing district attorneys. There are going to be criminal justice reforms on the ballot in November. And it's so important to vote. Voting in the primary is so important because it's how we decide who is going to be on the ballot in November. There are still dozens of local and state offices where you can help pick the candidates and we'll move on to the general election. And in some races, the election is actually decided in the primary. If one of those candidates gets more than half the votes. What every voter should do before their primary election is check their voter registration and make sure that their registration is up to date. This is especially important if you've moved before the election, if you haven't voted for several elections, or even if you're just uncertain if you're registered. Check your registration and re-register to vote. There's been a concerted effort to undermine confidence in our election systems, in particular our voting by mail system. Voting by mail has been used by millions of voters for decades. It's had bipartisan support for decades and is a safe and secure way to cast your vote. Once you receive your vote by mail ballot, you need to make sure you're following instructions for where you can return that ballot and how you can return the ballot. Again, the rules for this are going to vary by jurisdiction. There's going to be reminders there about the deadlines to return it, whether you need postage, um, about signing the ballot. In some states, you're also going to need a witness in order to cast that ballot. So make sure you're, you're following those instructions. In many counties, there are fewer polling sites than there, than there have been in previous elections. It's important if you're voting in person to also know the rules for voting in person in your county. In some, in some states, you're required to have certain forms of ID. So being prepared ahead of time is really important. If you, if you show up to your polling site on election day and there's a long, a long line, the first thing to remember is stay in line. Do not leave. If you're in line before the polls close, you're going to be able to cast your vote. Making people wait hours to vote is a form of voter suppression. And making people stand in lines and in crowds puts their health at risk. The Brennan Center's recent research shows that Black and Latino voters generally wait longer than white voters to vote and are more likely to have long waits. Changes have to be made so that voters do not face unreasonable waits again. If you show up to vote and for any reason you're told that you, you cannot vote, you should ask to cast a provisional ballot. Every voter should be able to cast a provisional ballot. You should not leave the polling site until you get that opportunity. If for some reason they're refusing or the poll workers are telling you that you cannot vote, you should ask to speak to a supervisor and you can call the election protection hotline at 866-OUR-VOTE to get assistance. If for some reason you vote provisionally on election day, you should be given a receipt or you should be, or you should ask for a receipt. Keep that receipt and you can follow up with the county elections office to make sure that your vote is counted. If you're a voter and you feel that, that somebody is trying to suppress you from voting, trying to stop you from voting, if you're feeling that, that there are being barriers put in place to keep you from voting, you should contact your local elections office and you can contact the election protection hotline.